know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were evil. They was in tradition. And uh, we as Christians, we got to watch the world that tries to get us in tradition and things of this nature. And we got to follow the Lord. And you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees were bad. Jesus told them they was. We got some of that going on up in our administration too. They bad. But we got to pray and ask God to, you know, God puts them in. He can take them out. Amen. Let's just see what the Lord has tonight. And uh, it was good this morning. Praise God. And I'm getting close. I just want y'all to know some joyous things. <laughs> Let's look and see what God has uh, for us tonight. It talked about evil hearts. We see evil hearts all over the world, don't we? We see evil hearts in uh, China, China. We see evil hearts in Iran. And we see uh, evil hearts in all of the, uh, the ones that's trying to destroy Israel in some of those areas. We see Hitler's wanting to rise up again. Think about it. The old Roman Empire's fixing to rise up. It's rising even now. And the Germans is involved in some of that, too. We have our neighbor up in Canada is not uh, uh, following the right thing. We just got evil rising up all around us. But we serve a risen Savior. And uh, we're his. Amen. We're a child of the king. And being a child of the king, we have benefits. And he's the one we can trust. He's the one we can serve through all the things that we go through. And, you know, God's trying to get us uh, right and prepared for him to come back and get us. I, I truly believe that. And I tell you, a lot of stuff's going to happen this year in 24, uh, 2024, I truly believe. And uh, we just got to be ready And because uh, he's our Savior. He's our Lord. Let's look and see what the Word talks about and uh, uh, see uh, uh, about some of these things. You know, some of the Pharisees and Sadducees, they pretended. They pretended. They were hypocrites. They pretended to love God and to serve God, but they really loved and served their self. And we're going to see this in some of the, uh, the word God uh, has for us tonight. Then came to get together unto him uh, the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And I tell you right now, when they come in there to see Jesus, they come with a critical spirit, didn't they? You know they did. And they're looking for things to come against him with. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, uh, defiled, and they say, uh, they to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. Do y'all see that? Did you know the Pharisees and Sadducees? They come up with all of these things uh, that was traditional that all the people was supposed to do what they tells them to do. You know. And uh, you're supposed to wash your hands before you eat bread and all that stuff. And Jesus uh, uh, showed them a little different there. And they had traditions of washing their hands and pans and all kind of stuff like that. But look at, look at here. They're looking for fault. You see it. Let's go a little bit further. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except, uh, except they wash their hands often, they eat not holding the tradition of the elders. They got to do what the elders do or they'll get ridiculed for it or come against them. Look here. And when they come from the market except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups, pots, basins, vessels, and of tables. Now, there's nothing wrong with washing your hands and stuff like that, you know, but there's a limit to that. And they had tradition here that you had to go by their little tradition of how they do all this stuff in the, in the temple and everything. This is the way I, I read this. Look here. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? other words, the tradition of the elders, you're supposed to wash your hands and honor some of the traditions that they had. I, it getting a little deep here, and I, I, I like this. And he answered and said unto them, who, who answered? Jesus did. He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah 
prophesies of you hypocrites as it is written jesus said this he said what isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written uh, this people honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me we see that in the world today a lot don't we you know you go up a lot of times you ask people are you christians and, and well i think i am if they think they are they not christians most of the time you know that answer is wrong and we see people all over the world out here, and we talk to them about the Lord and stuff like that, and they think they can, they do, and they're going to church, and they are getting this and that, and, but their heart is not there because when they leave church, they get into things they shouldn't get into. They're not obeying God's commandments. God has given us commandments, and he expects us to follow those commandments. Now, we're children and we're his children sometimes we might mess up we mess up we can fall on our knees and ask god to forgive us and he's a god with mercy and grace amen but it's not a a uh, continuous thing that you stay in that uh, sin you get out of it look right here how be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men you see that you see what jesus said he said they're teaching doctrines of men not of Moses, the Ten Commandments, and those things that they're supposed to be teaching. They're teaching doctrine of men, and they come up with what they want, and they accept that, and they feed that to the people. And they deceive the people by doing that. That's why you and I must stay close to God's Word, stay in God's Word, and know who we are as Christians. When somebody asks you what is your belief and why, you need to know exactly why and what your belief is. Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, you know, you need to know that he died on the cross and he was buried and on the third day he arose. And you believe that. That's your faith and belief in him. And you believe in a God that loves us and he saved us with his redemptive uh, blood and his power after he rose uh, from the grave. Hallelujah. He is our Lord. He radically changed our life, didn't he? He did. Man can't do what... Uh, God does to a human being. Think about it. I don't care how many doctors or whoever you go or whatever, only God can take a person and change them from the inside out. Amen? How be it? In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In other words, you know, there was some of them that was bad and illegal, and they would teach uh, the people what they wanted to gain money and to gain uh, prestige and all of those things that's that's some of the tactics that they used i could go into the uh uh the what the, the dark ages and whatever when the uh the the uh the catholics and some of them they wouldn't let the people read the word they had to read the word and they changed the word and they done it to prosper them for Laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the tradition of men. The tradition of men. You ever see them sometimes? They shake all this stuff and they got all this stuff on and they, you know, where's God at? Where's God at? I'll tell you, you know, I, I remember one time me and uh, Jeanette and Roy went to a funeral. It was a lawyer's funeral. And we went in this church. It was a... I'm just, you know, it was a church. I'm just going to tell you. Supposed to be a church. And uh, the priest and all them come down and they was uh, doing all this stuff and everything. And, you know, me and Roy and Jeanette all left that funeral. He was a good man and uh, he'd done a lot of good things. And, but that was his church. And we all left that church and we said the same thing. We ain't felt, God, we did not, God ain't been here in a long time. You could tell it in your spirit. God gives us discernment as 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 uh, brothers and sisters. Amen. God hadn't been there in a long time. Think about it. That was that was a true thing that we did too, and uh, we both all had the same experience when we come out. We all talked about it. Man, God ain't been in that church in a long time. There's churches out there today that God ain't in. They've gone off in other directions because of the evils of their heart. And they have altered the word of God the way they want it to satisfy some of their desires the way they want it. And there's other 
religions out there everywhere because of that reason. They want to do what they want to do, not what God wants to do. And you can see right here where the Lord said, you know, for laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things you do. And he said unto them, Fool, will you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own tradition? A lot of them do that. They reject the commandments of God, obeying his holy word, so they can keep the tradition the way it's supposed to be. Think about it. That's awesome, isn't it? I remember one time I went to a prison. <clears throat> Me and Mike Thompson. Some of y'all remember Mike. He loved the Lord, and I know he still does. He probably a deacon over there at church he goes to. I hadn't talked to him in a long time. I'd like to see him talk to him. But he used to go to prison with us a lot of times. So me and Mike, we got up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and we drove all the way down to Columbia. On a, I think it was on a Sunday. Anyway, we got up, we drove all the way down to Columbia and got through checking all that stuff, and we was going to go to Kirkland and preach the gospel. Uh, I was supposed to preach down there. brought Mike. He was going to sing. And so at that time, I'm just going to be honest, we had a chaplain down there. He wasn't very loving. He didn't have much love of Jesus in him. So here, here goes me and old Mike in there. We come in there, you know, we go through all the checking in and all that stuff, and we go in there, and it's a full, it's where they had their child and everything, but we had a full uh, thing of people in there, and some of the wives and children was able to come in and be with their their, their spouses that was in prison and I was going to be the guest speaker of the word you know I prepared a message and everything we drove two hours to get down there and uh, we got down there and uh, Mike was going to sing you know he's going I brought my guitar but I was going to let Mike sing if I didn't have time just let Mike you know uh, be the singer so and we had and the, and the chaplain come over and said you got we got one hour and he gave me a bulletin and he looked at that bulletin and he said, right here's where you'll come in. You'll have 12 minutes. 45, almost 50 minutes was given uh, to them to sing in their choir and do all this stuff. You know, the power of God just wasn't moving the way it should. But anyway, he told us, he told me, he said, you'll have 12 minutes. He said, I'll tell you when to step up and preach the word in 12 minutes. And he said, oh, by the way, he said, we're going to film it, and it's going to go down to death row. Twelve minutes. You really get fired up in twelve minutes, can't you? So I told the guy, kind of got hot. I said, listen, we drove two hours down here, and this man sings. I want him to sing a special. He's got the anointing on him. I want him to say, oh, no, it's going to be by this bullet. This is the way we're going to do it. I said, okay. So me and old Mike got to praying. Mike didn't get to sing, but I got my 12 minutes. I got up there, and the power of God hit me, and man, fire come in that place like fireballs, and they were 12 people got saved, and it was and it was recorded on recording, and they sent it to death row. And I'll tell you right now, that 12 minutes, the power of God busted that place apart. But me and Mike left, and we never come back. We, we said, I mean, it's not worth it. You know, some pre, some some uh, institutions we go to, it, they welcome you. They, 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 they like you being there. You know, we used to go pretty regular to a lot of them. But this particular one had a, had an issue and had a problem. So we said, well, you know, and, and it's bad for the men because they don't get uh, what they needed there. But uh, we just, I, you know, I'm not going, I'm not driving two hours and do that again and, and take the, uh, two hours down, two hours back and do that. For 12 minutes but God did move in that 12 minutes and it went to death row and touched them men I'm sure too but you see what happens when people get evil in their heart and they want to get into tradition this is the way it's going to be and you notice we don't have one of those bulletins here we got a beautiful bulletin I'm I'm, 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 I'm Thelma does a great job on our bulletin and everything but you can look on and see what we're going to do but we don't go by we go by what the Holy Ghost says amen if he says pray for the people, we pray for the people. If he says sing, whatever, you know, we, we I, you know, I'm over here uh, when praise and worship's going on. I'm asking God how to direct the service and what to do and what do you want, God? Amen. We let Him 
uh, uh, direct the service uh, the way. And I'm, I'm proud of that, praise God, because I've experienced other things, you know. And uh, you'll be surprised uh, where you uh, go in some of these places. Tradition. I remember I went to a funeral one time, and I ministered. And uh, the power of God hit me, and there's two or three ministers going to get up there and speak, which is okay, but, and I wasn't trying to be a hot dog and take over. I was just trying to tell, do what God told me to do. I was going to have an altar call. I thought that was very important. Guess what? They pulled my coattail and asked me to sit down. They, <laughs> they was in tradition there a little bit, wasn't it? This is the way it's going to be. And I wouldn't. I wasn't out of line, and I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't taking up a lot of time, but I was doing what God told me to do. Amen. Because He's the one I I go by. But you know, people get into this is the way it's supposed to be, and and uh, you gotta. They get complacent in it, and uh, <laughs> you know. I'm trying to think of that joke where the Lord talked about that somebody said uh, I've been praying that I could get in that church down there and preach and the Lord said I've been praying to get in there 20 years myself <laughs> that ain't the way it goes but it's close you know let's get back and see what he said and he said unto them for well you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own tradition see that's the key right there you got to do what God says I don't care what tradition and other things this is the way we do it he is the leader and he is the head of the church and we as leaders are directed by him the head of the church amen think about it that you keep your own traditions is in a bad way look at here for moses said honor thy father and thy mother and who is a cursed father and mother let him die the death i studied that a little bit right there to find out what that said it's talking about you know you and i our mother and daddy took care of us we spoke to take care of our mother and daddies our fathers and mothers we spoke to do that okay but back in that day in the, in jesus day the 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 pharisees and sadducees they were some of them it was bad and so they would go in there and they would uh, uh, uh tell some people it was uh selfish and rude it didn't want to help their parents with materialistic things or money or whatever and they would tell their parents uh, well i've given it to the church so that annulled them from helping their parents that ain't what god said god said honor thy father and thy mother Let's look right here and see a little bit further. Let him die the death. I'll tell you. But if you say, a man shall say to his father and his mother, it is Corban, that is to say a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be uh, profited by me, he shall be free. In other words, he was free from, the, the, from that statement of Moses to honor thy father and mother the way God said to do because he went to a priest that was evil and paid him a little money and you tell my parents that I don't have to give none of this to them because I gave it to the church. If you read and study and get into that right there, that's what that says. That's pretty, pretty stiff, ain't it? And uh, that's evil in people's heart. That's how it is in the world. I'll tell you right now, uh, it's, it's, it's all around us. Let's look a little further. And you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of non-effect through your tradition. You see how they handle that tradition to get out of doing that? Which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, one of you, and understand. Every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that enters into a man yet to compile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile him. In other words, what God's saying there, what in the drought, what we do, when we eat all this stuff, you know, it goes out to drought. It don't harm the man. But when what comes out of the heart is what harms. And that's what the Lord's saying here. Look at here. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. 
because it entereth not into his heart, but into his belly, and goeth out unto the drought, purging all meats. And he said, that which cometh out of the man that defile the man. In other words, it come out of his heart. Think about it. You get around somebody and say they're a Christian and everything, and you see them downtown down there cussing like a sailor. They got some bad stuff coming out of that heart and ain't right. And it, I see it. It happens all the time. And, you know, we as Christians, we got to do what? You know, we might slip up every now and then ourselves, but when you do, you're not intentionally going out there and staying in the sin. You come into God's house and you're loving him and you're praising him and you're worshiping him. And uh, you might mess up every now and if you do, he's a loving father with mercy and grace and he'll forgive you. Amen? And don't let the sins build up. Get on your knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You let them keep building up before you know it, you'll be out of the house of God. We're supposed to endure to the end. And I'm going to tell you, it's getting harder and harder. Harder and harder. And my desire is everybody in here step up another level this year spiritually with God. And like that preacher I was listening to this morning before we come to church, when you do that, uh, demon, demons of hell send another, another demon to, to work on you. But that's okay. We get through it. Amen. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceedeth evil thoughts, adulterers, fornication, murderers. It comes from within a man's evilness that he, you know, we're born in evil, ain't we? We're born in it because of Adam and Eve. We're under the curse. Look here. Thieves, coverness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All of them things ain't good. We got to get them out. When we become a Christian, we start obeying God's commandments. And when we start obeying God's commandments, we take inventory. If we got some of these things going on, we got to ask God to help us get them out. I want to be worthy to go in a rapture, don't you? You know, God said even his elect would be deceived in the last days. Did you know that? So we got to stay close. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. We see that. God is an awesome God and he loves us. Tradition of men, not the commandments of God, but of men. The Pharisees, we see right there how they were evil in doing those things. You know, uh, from, far, you know they, uh, a, a lot of them that claim they love the Lord, they're far from the Lord. They're not, they not nowhere close to the Lord. Let's look and see what this says right here. This right here, what does this say? But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You know, what's his name? Uh, Moses come up with a commandment, you know, you ain't supposed to commit adultery and all that in the Ten, Ten Commandments and everything. Well, Jesus said if a man looks and stirs at a woman and starts lusting after her, he's already committed adultery. So, men... You better watch that second glance and don't take it or you'll be uh, 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 tempted and, and drawn. So that's what God said. That's what the Lord said. Look here. And, you know, you, you, it's all over the TV, isn't it? it you, you really got to watch some of the, the stuff that's on your Internet. You'll be praising God with a praise song and an evil thing will pop up in front of you and, and you think you have to fight to get it off. See, that's what the world's coming to, this kind of evilness. And we as Christians, God wants us to live a holy life. He wants us to live a holy life. And he will help us. It's something you can't do. You need help. And God said, if you'll ask him, he'll give you that help. Amen. Seek him about it. It says right here in uh, Matthew 15, 8 and 9, This people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. God is an awesome God. He loves us, and uh, he wants uh, all good things for us, and we got to obey his commandments. Amen. We don't need to be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. We need to obey his commandments because God is an awesome God, and he loves his children. And you know, my mom and dad, if I was doing something wrong, they would correct me. So we as children of God... If we're doing something wrong, God will correct you. And, uh, you know, if you'll judge yourself when we do the Lord's Supper and say, Lord, 
Make sure everything's right. If it ain't, let me know I want to be right before you. Amen. He has given us that because he loves us. He is our heavenly father. Just like our earthly father and mother, most of them tried to teach us right from wrong. Our Lord Jesus, uh, you know, he's the potter and we the clay. And he's molding and shaping us, amen, to what he wants us to be. He's an awesome God and he loves us. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. I thought that was a, a, a pretty good thing there, showing the Pharisees and Sadducees of what they're doing and uh, what's going on there. Amen. And uh, I thought it was a good example to show that uh, we got a lot of that stuff going on today. You know, these people in these big high places sometimes may not be what uh, they think they are. The Pharisees and Sadducees, they had tradition and they did what men wanted to do. They didn't obey God's commandments like they're supposed to. But you and I, we got the truth. Jesus said, y'all sing about it today. I'm the way, the truth, the life. Amen. No man to come to the Father but by me. And praise God, we come to him. Amen. So, you know, beware and look and watch because there's evil things going on all around us. And stay in God's word and the sensitivity of discernment and God will show you and help you to see where these error there. And he'll show you and he'll direct your path. Amen. God loves us. God loves us. And he shows us and he tells us and he, he tells us. He puts us in the caution mode sometime in certain things in our lives. Think about it. Let's everybody bow our head. Father, we love you so much, and we praise you. We honor you tonight, God, and help us, Lord, to dig in your commandments. And, Lord, if there's any area in our lives that's not pleasing to you, God, reveal it to us, God, and help us uh, to deal with it and get it out, God, in Jesus' name, because we want to be worthy to go in the rapture, God. Help us to prepare. Help, help us, the church, to prepare to be ready uh, for what you want to do, God, in a powerful way, God. Because we love you and we praise you and we sense your presence and we think we sense your moving uh, on our behalf, God. And we love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us and getting us in unity and getting us prepared so we can receive and, and the gifts of the Spirit will work freely to glorify and exalt and lift your body up, God. And be ready for that day, God. Bless each and every one that's here in a special way. This week, protect over us. I apply the blood of Jesus over everyone. Put a hedge on everyone, God. In Jesus' name, <coughs> and everybody said amen and amen. Praise God. If anybody needs prayer, we'll certainly pray for you. Uh, if not, 